Hi there, I'm John Muir Laws. I'm an artist, wildlife biologist, and an explorer. Today, I want to take a careful look at this painting of Denali reflected in Wonder Lake by artist explorer Tony Foster. This is a spectacular landscape. The mountain face is enormous, but it's almost always hidden by clouds. So if you're going to be painting Denali, you need just the right bit of luck. So uh, Tony came out and he scouted for this location, and he's found this place where anywhere else in this landscape, you're not gonna see this, but from right here, from right where he's standing, the top of the mountain is reflected on the surface of the lake. So that's his spot. And then he just has to wait for the weather to cooperate for him. While he was out here, he was caught in several just torrential Alaskan rainstorms. Um, other days, there was too much fog in the way of the mountain. Other days, the mountain was just obscured by mist and clouds. He was visited by grizzly bears, by wolves, by bald eagles, by caribou while he was out here waiting. You can see that the, the mountains, the hills around him, are starting to turn color. Fall has arrived here in Alaska. The long, hot days of summer are receding, and he's just got a little bit of time to try to catch this mountain. And fortunately, there was a break in the storms, and in a few days, he was able to get enough information about the mountain to be able to finish this painting. I want to point out to you one of the strategies that Tony Foster is using that I think makes this painting particularly effective. And what it is, is the use of cross-contour lines. A cross-contour line is a line that goes up over a hill and follows the contours, the ups and the downs, of that hill. So if you look here in the foliage and the vegetation, you can see in the shadows and the lines of these fall plants, these lines are cross-contour lines. So when I look at this, with, I can tell that this is a slope that is coming up to a crest here and then down on the other side right here. Without those, just mentally erase that, and it's just a bump. And your brain isn't clear on whether that is something that is sticking up or if you're looking down a slope. But with these cross-contour lines kind of curving out and away from us, it's clear to us that we're looking down a slope here. You can see the same sort of strategy going on elsewhere in the picture. This hillside, without these lines of trees on it, it would be hard to sort of understand their shape. But because of these rows of trees, you can follow this up you know exactly how steep these are. Less steep over here. Here's pretty steep slope right in there because this line starts more at a gentler angle then goes up at a steeper angle right here. We can tell from that that this is a slope that is kind of coming in more gently and then rising steeply. So those are cross contour lines. You can see the same thing going on in these hills here. You see these distant indications of, of, the, of the tundra plants starting to turn color right in here. And those are arched across these low hills. What about up in here? Now it's the snow fields and the directions of these snow fields that gives us the angle of the slope. So we have these shadows in the vegetation here, the trees, and here we've got these snow fields. So notice that these ones are coming down at an angle like this, these ones coming down at an angle here. We understand that as then being a valley. So anywhere you see cross contour lines, you can choose to include that in your picture. And notice here that it's a choice. It's impossible for anyone, even Tony Foster, to include every detail of the landscape around you. So you're constantly making choices. What am I going to include? What am I going to suggest? What am I going to leave out? But here, the choices that he's made to what to include in his drawing really helps us be able to carve each one of these slopes. Finally, on the face of Denali, we have the evidence of these sort of big ice shelves here, here, and here, where we can see those, those lines help us again be able to understand the angle of that face of the mountain.
So it ends up being a very textural painting. You can put your hands on this slope and kind of know that I'm coming down here, what that would feel like, how the steepness of these jagged teeth right here, the smoothness of these hills, that's all coming across because of the, the deliberate decisions of what Tony Foster has chosen to leave in or to leave out. So one more interesting anecdote about this painting. When Tony Foster had finished it, he took his finished painting and he brought that into the ranger station and put it out before the rangers. They gathered around and to their surprise, they, they realized that Tony Foster had been spending days here on the mountain at the exact spot that had been found years before by photographer Ansel Adams. And the two of them, in looking around this whole vast landscape, had converged on this one spot. What are the chances of that? I actually think the chances are pretty good. Because both of them had an eye for this moment right here. The only place in the park that you'd be able to see that reflection like that, that's the moment that they were looking for. And so those two artists, separated by years and media, found the same location because of the reflection of the mountain's face in Wonder Lake.